Mmm. Damn, those look good. All right, guys. Casey here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. This week, I'm elbows deep in a Borg Warner 1356 transfer case. This is uh, off of the Bronco. Um, I don't know if you guys caught the video about the Bronco, but the transmission went out. When you get a remanufactured transmission, they don't do the transfer case. And to me, it seems silly to have a fresh transmission and 150,000 mile T case. So um, that said, I want to make a quick video. Uh, Getting Junk Done has a video series on rebuilding these transfer cases. I just stumbled upon his channel, excellent channel, uh, wealth of information, and um, I always like to, to see somebody else dive into something that I've never done before, before I dive into it myself. But I noticed that he had a hard time with some of these snap rings in this thing. This is like an addendum to the Getting Junk Done Borg Warner 1356 transfer case rebuild where I'm gonna talk about a couple different pairs of snap ring pliers that are really good. Uh, the first one is this Wild Tool Company, uh, G409.NP. And we'll get up close to the camera there. It's got a serrated edge and an offset edge. So you can come in, you can grab snap rings like this, spreading them here, or you can come in from the top and grab them like this, spreading them here. Uh, these are for snap rings. I'll bring the camera in and show you. All right, and these are the type of snap rings that you use the wild snap ring pliers for. As you can see, there are no ears uh, with holes on this type of snap ring to get in, but you get in here with these little these little ears and you prime them apart. Anyway, when you have that type of snap ring, you really need a good set of pliers. Again, these are a wild tool, G409.NP. Um, absolutely critical to have a set like this to do this job. My other set is uh, <clears throat> is just a really beefy set of regular post style snap ring pliers from Blue Point. Um, Blue Point PR-56A. They're reversible so they work with inside or outside snap rings. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let me show you what those look like real quick. All right, so this is the type of snap ring that you use with the Blue Point PR-56A snap ring pliers. Uh, I think they call this an ear type snap ring. Okay, so anyway, uh, one of the areas where um, getting junk done was struggling, I think, is that you have to unload the snap ring. Um, so right now I've got this thing set on the input shaft, which means that the case is pushing down. You'll see if I go like this, um, if you were just sitting on the case, the weight of the shaft would be working against you. So this snap ring that I'm going to attempt to take off here, it spins freely. I've got a little bit of air gap underneath it. There's a teeny little bit of play. That's what you want. If you, if you can't move the snap ring at all, or, um, you know, there's, it's tight up against the part underneath it, you're going to have a hell of a time getting it out. So proper tools and then trying to, uh, work, uh, unload the snap ring. So basically all you have to do is get your snap ring pliers in there, get a really good grip and you don't want to crank them wide open because you don't want to like over bend the snap ring. It's a spring steel. And if you go too far, you can damage it. But anyway, that's it. And they just come right off. So having the proper tool really helps. Now I'm going to move the camera to get in closer to show you um, how to tackle this guy right here. All right, so this little guy is still totally a pain in the butt. I'm going to zoom in. Um, pardon me bouncing around here, uh, but I want you to be able to see how this works. So, so you can see the snap ring is unloaded. Now, these wild pliers are serrated, but the snap ring, I, I don't have enough room to get in there uh, into the serrated part. So this is tricky, um, but a proper technique does make it easy. What's gonna be really tricky is to show you with any sort of detail without blocking the camera. I guess that works. All right, so, so to try to press them open and pull the thing out 
all the way is really tricky. So what I do, I spread them a little bit. I start them out of the groove like so, and then I can get another bite on them, spread them just a little bit more and get the back out. And that's all there is to it. Now, to be fair, this is not the snap ring that hung up getting junk done. So I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and dive a little further into the transmission and see if I can figure it out. All right, so you guys will have to forgive me for not filming this in the case. Um, I couldn't get the camera in a place where I felt like um, I could really show you guys what was going on aside from just watching me struggle uh, and actually get a clip of it. But I put the snap ring back on and I wanna to explain to you guys how I went about this. So first of all, on these snap ring pliers, um, <clears throat> they were physically too wide across the tips um, to get down, like it wouldn't physically fit in between the case and the planetary. So I had to uh, file off a little bit of this little extra leg that sticks out here. <clears throat> so the next thing I, I, I could physically get them down in at that point, but the next thing I ran into was clearance on the backside. So I ground some clearance on the backside. Easy enough, right? Um, so what made me struggle at that point was I'm coming in like this and I'm tilting my pliers ever so slightly to get you know onto this uh, lock ring. And this is called a lock ring, by the way, not a snap ring. And in tilting the, the pliers, what I was running into is basically my contact surface. Once I tilt the pliers, my contact surface is only on the very top edge of this lock ring. And so the pliers had a tendency to kind of snap out of the lock ring, which doesn't do anybody any good. So what I did is I ground the corresponding angle into the tip of the pliers. That way, when I'm in at my angle needed to clear the shaft and actually get some movement, the bottom of my pliers are at a 90 to the, uh, the ledge in the inner part of the case and that's the optimum purchase. So basically, all you gotta do at that point, and it's really not any harder inside the case, is you gotta spread this thing just wide enough and she comes out like that. And obviously you saw that I cheated by grabbing onto the back. Having a pick kinda helps to keep things moving in the right direction. The reason this is such a pain in the ass is because to spread it far enough to get it out of the groove, um, it wants to cock. It wants, you know, the two ends of the lock ring want to swap sides. Um, so you're fighting that because basically you want it to come out nice and easy and, and that's the trick. With slight modifications on the wild uh, lock ring pliers, you can do this relatively easily. It's still a hard lock ring to get out. Probably the hardest one I've ever done on a transmission or a transfer case of any kind. But uh, not something to give up the battle over if you have the right tools. So that's uh, what hung up getting junk done. Once you do that, the planetary basically just falls out. As you can see here, I have a, a big chunk of billet that I basically rested underneath the planetary so that um, so that it didn't fall. And then you just slide the top half of the case off. The bearings on this are not interference fit. They just slide right into place. Um, and the planet looks pretty good. Reading the forms, uh, several people have stopped short of getting the planet out. So therefore they were unable to uh, remove the inner needle bearing and the inner bronze bushing. Um, Supposedly, people have said you need a special puller to get this out, but I don't believe so. Looking at this, that's a, a caged uh, needle bearing, but it's got a cup. So I think you can just flip the planetary over and tap this out, and then the bushing um, should come out with it. And then you install in the reverse order. The only reason I'm not gonna do this for you guys on camera is because um, I was shorted that needle bearing in my kit uh, but if I can't get it for some reason, I don't want to damage it pulling it out and then not have a transfer case. Let me show you what to do next on the case itself. All right, so on the case itself, relatively straightforward process to get the rest of this thing apart. There are lock rings that hold in place 
the uh, the two bearings, the two roller bearings, or ball bearings, cage bearings, I don't know. Anyway, uh, and for those, you just get in there with the screwdriver, pry the lock rings, and you just work them out of their groove in a circle. Um, you've also got the outer uh, gear for the planetary gear. There's a proper term for that, but I don't know what it is. Pop that guy out, lock ring as well, and then the gear just slides straight out. And it looks like it can only go in one way because there are little locating tabs in the magnesium all the way around. And then same thing, another lock ring on this inner bearing here. Uh, these bearings are a very light interference fit to the case. So uh, just a soft drift to top them out. Now, the other place that people seem to get hung up, at least in reading the forms, is the shift lever and the uh, shift selector and this big nasty spring that it's attached to. So on the early cases, <clears throat> the shift arm is held in place by a nut and you take the nut off and then the shift arm slides off and you can get to the seal to replace the shift shaft seal, shift shaft seal without removing the selector inside the case. As you can see on this one, it's fixed because this is a later transfer case. This is a 95. Um, if you have that type, <laughs> I read on two forums that it's a non-serviceable part. That is not true. Um, on the part with the nut, there would be an E-clip on the back of this shaft and you pop that clip and then the shifter, or I'm sorry, I guess it'd be on this side. You pop that clip and then the shifter arm and shaft pull out from outside the case and then the spring and the selector both kind of fall out um, as well because they're under pressure. That other design is fairly obvious how to do it. This design is not fairly obvious and I'm hoping the camera is going to zoom in there so you can see. Can you see that? Inside the shift detent hole, there is a set screw in there. So, 764 Allen key, and this should slide right out. Yes, it is going to slide right out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the case down, and then I'm going to just pull, because as soon as I get this out, that spring tension is going to release. So, there's your shift shaft, and that's how you remove it on the later transfer cases. Um, and you can see where your set screw goes. Looks like it can only go together one way. And now we can get at the seal to change that. And the selector itself just falls out. So the last part of these cases that might hang you up, this guy right here, this little, uh, needle bearing. I always like to try to get to a bearing from the backside and drive it out. Um, that's just the way I was taught. I don't know if that's a desirable way to do it or not, but that's what I've always tried to do. So anyway, this guy, you can't get to the back of it. Um, you've got a little channel that runs all the way through to the bottom there. And then it looks like it doesn't seat quite all the way down either. So I'm thinking pilot bearing puller. You can rent those at your local auto parts store. Basically, it's got a pair of claws that go in and wedge out and uh, have little tangs on the bottom that get underneath. And then you uh, you turn a screw uh, that, that basically forces the two legs out. And then that hooks to a slide hammer and you give it a couple of pops with the slide hammer and it should come right out. Um, so I'm gonna go rent one of those tomorrow to get that last guy out. Another thing you could do, now this is magnesium. <laughs> Um, so don't take me at my word here, but with aluminum cases in these style bearings, you can throw the cases in an oven, uh, about 250 degrees and you can let them sit there for about an hour, get nice and, and hot. And then you just take them out and you, you know, a surface like a workbench, you turn the case upside down and you just kind of slam it down like that. And usually that's enough to make the bearings fall out. Um, Worth a try anyway. Um, and then any tool that you use while the case is hot, it's going to come out that much easier. 
All right, you guys, so there you have it. A pair of fully disassembled Borg Warner 1356 transfer case halves. Um, I need to get these in the parts washer and cleaned up. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this week. Uh, hit that like button if you like what you saw in today's video. Hit me up in the comments to let me know what you thought. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel because that helps me keep content coming to you week in and week out. Let me know if you want to see a Borg Warner 1356 rebuild and assembly. But this was just this video was just meant to serve as an addendum to getting junk done's video, a uh, Borg Warner 1356 rebuild series, as well as the information that's out there on the internet. I, I felt as I was looking for information about this T case that there was a bit of a information gap. And so I wanted to show you guys if you're doing a later 1356 from like I think 92 on, it's gonna have that style of shift selector. Don't get hung up on lock rings. Get yourself a pair of wild lock ring pliers. G409 VAT NP. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, you guys. I'll see you next week.